hello friend currently you can see that there are two project wide open one is c++ and the other one is dot c i mean to say c language if you notice the very first line of both the programs here you will find it's just written as io stream whereas here it is written as stdio.h so in both these two files dot h is something missing right so what do you think is there any difference between that or they are all the same so if i write a dot h over here and with that if i go for okay by the way let me first compile the program and let's see whether it is working or not yes the program got compiled it is asking me to enter a number so let me go for 13 yes the output also came very smoothly now what I will do is I will put a dot H over here okay and now let me compile my program wow it is giving an error let's see what the error is fatal error iostream dot H no such file or directory so the compiler is saying that there is no such file by the name iostream dot H do you think it's interesting why it is so whereas on the other hand why it has given dot h over here then okay so that means this is a file that there exists in the system so let's go and try to compile this program now so let me activate this project okay and let me now run this project yes hello world is coming so what i will do over here is i will remove this dot h and let me try to run it wow now it is saying stdio no such file is there that means in this case I have to give dot H otherwise it will not run whereas in case of C++ let me activate the project first so in case of C++ I have to give without dot H otherwise it will not work pretty interesting isn't it why it is so the underlying fact lies within the compiler I mean to say within the IDE which we are working on so let's go and check it out currently I'm working in code block so once you have installed the code block you come to your C drive program files x86 over here you will find the code block folder let me open this folder here is mean GW and over here you will find a folder called include so if you double click over here you will find all the header files that is present in the C compiler so even your stdr.h is present right over here so as you scroll down this is what the file is stdr.h we were using which is basically a header file which is basically a header file so I can say stdr.h is our header file should I say the same thing for iostream the answer is no you cannot say because if you think iostream is over here then you type i and over here see all the files that are there iostream is not over here iostream is missing so obviously you cannot call it as a header file so let's come back to mean gw and come to the lib folder now so you go to the lib gcc is the compiler name and mean gw32 the version which we are using is 4.3.2 let's go inside and over here we'll find another folder called include you will find another folder called include as you double click on that here you will find C++ you double click on this and a hell lot of files you will find over here a very interesting thing you will notice over here is iostream which is of type file it is of type file which is not a header file so iostream is not actually a header file rather it's a file and what this file contains for better understanding let's open this file in notepad and let's see what is there inside I'm very sure you will be a little bit surprised to see what is there inside so as I scroll down it is a combination of standard IO stream objects so this is something what you need to say so it's a file that is basically going to represent IO stream object and if you minimize this see over here I is over here and definitely O is over here see both these two files it is a culminating these two files into this one so let's scroll down 
and what it constitute of it constitute of standard io stream object that what it is made up of so your io stream is a file which consists of namespace and what namespace it has got it has got the namespace std it has got the namespace std and that's the reason why in all c++ program you will find this line is written using namespace std so when you are using c++ you have to write io stream make sure don't call this to be as a header file it is a simple file which relates to the standard input output object rather than header file okay remember this next what is there inside what is the beauty of this file the beauty of this file is it is referring to the namespace std and what is there inside the std it will be representing your all standard stream object that are c in which is the input stream rest all three are the output stream so these stream objects these standard stream objects is what actually your io stream file is going to provide and that's the reason why that's the reason why the program which is running so smoothly if i remove this particular statement just see what happens now as i have removed it let me compile it immediately it will give you an error because see c out was not declared just because std reference you have removed it so it is unable to get to the definition of c out so what is c out that what it is failing to find because that reference is coming from your namespace std so in many time in the interview this question has been asked what why do we use this particular namespace so the answer to this question is this particular namespace is providing us different standard stream object okay so once you remove that your c out is undeclared as it's been stated over here so now what to be done so two thing got very clear your io stream is not a header file and there is no such file called io stream.h that's the reason you saw rather you have got only io stream and there is no h over here so this is just a file with an extension of type i mean it's a io stream with a file name and extension is dot file not dot h okay that is the first thing and what it consists of it consists of standard stream objects and that's the reason why we have to write over here using namespace std so if i'm removing the std your reference to this stream object will be disconnected so what to be done if you're removing your your using namespace statement in that case you have to write over here as std scope resolution in all the cases so if you write this your c out is now able to get track of but your c in will not be able to so let me compile it again look c in is getting prevented because as you can see over here your c in is also the part of the namespace right so you have to give over here again std std scope resolution as well as the last c out as well so in this way if you are removing you are using namespace statement then in all the c out and c in statement you have to use the following lines which is not that comfortable enough right so instead of writing all the time std std with the scope resolution it is better that you write it over here using namespace because which is a default namespace as you can see std so once you have written this in that case you don't need to write these things again so it you can remove this scope resolution followed by the default namespace you can remove it and then if you compile it your program is going to be compiled very smoothly right so from this program one thing got very clear is don't call io stream to be an header file it is a f it is just a file in fact there is no file called io stream dot h which you saw also and the second important thing is that this io stream is going to hold the standard stream objects standard stream object and this is present inside the namespace std which is a default as you can see over here it's a default namespace that will provide us with the different input output stream object that is c in and c out okay and for that reason you have to write this particular line if you are removing this line 
in other in that case you will be writing std which is a default one followed by the scope resolution you have to write over here so in all the cases of c in and c out you have to write over there but if you don't want to write that line so you better write it over here so this program was all about io stream and i gave you a very brief introduction to namespace again you saw it's a default namespace that means if you want as a developer you do can create a namespace of your own so in my next video i will be talking about that what is advantage of creating a namespace by your own okay so that's all from this video thank you very much